Hey guys, this is Leo here from Weird Winchester. So we got exciting new details or let's say hints about season 14 finale in a preview I uh, made earlier on my channel. And uh, I hinted at that person coming back, uh, showrunner Andrew Deb hinted at someone, a familiar face coming back. My guess would be Adam and my other guess would be Lucifer finally getting back into Nick or even Sam in the finale, who knows, right? Um, very unlikely is gonna be Sam for them to repeat that storyline unless they really want to do a swan song 2.0 with Sam, Lucifer, Dean having Michael coming out of him. I feel like all of it's gonna tie tie in together with the whole Michael storyline. I could be wrong. Um, there are hints about Michael getting out of Dean once again, being expelled from Dean before the finale because one of the upcoming episodes, I believe the title is Peace of Mind uh, episode not the next one, the one after the next one, I think, something like that, which suggests that Dean will have, you know, peace of mind, literally, from Michael banging on the door in his mind's cage. So we could be expecting that Michael will remain with Dean until the finale breaking out, like, uh, you know, Billy expected him to, to destroy the world after breaking out, but he could easily just be gone before the finale, then we have another big thing to deal with in the finale. Michael could go into someone else strong, and he's gonna have to find maybe uh, Lucifer inside Sam or Lucifer inside Nick being an ally to the boys once again. There are so many possibilities of what's going to happen and I love to be surprised. I, I mean last year I guess that uh, the new character Jensen will play will be Michael. I didn't guess it's gonna be Michael 2. I was gonna say yes to Michael 2. This part surprised me because that's insane. Michael 2 is even worse than the first one. But yeah, I kinda already predicted that. Uh, twist in last season's finale is that it's gonna be Michael anyway, the new character for Jensen. So this time, here's my guess, uh, leading towards Adam coming back somehow, because we did get a hint of Adam uh, this season when uh, Jack talked to Michael about his uncle being in the cage. Obviously he's talking about Michael 1, but Michael 1 wasn't Adam last time we saw him, and he went with him in the cage. A lot of fans are saying that, hey, Adam is dead, why are you guys talking about Adam in the cage? He's dead, he went to heaven because, you know, uh, Cass burned him, hey ass butt, and he burned him. It was a Molotov thing, so Adam must be dead, right? It's just Michael now, possessing a dead vessel, which I don't think that's exactly what happened at all. What happened is, uh, Michael brought Adam back after he burned, just like they tried to burn uh, Dean when Sam brilliantly throws a Molotov on him in the recent episode and Dean was burning but Michael protected him from totally burning especially the handcuffs kept him from burning completely somehow trapping him um, I don't know but doesn't seem like Adam died like a lot of fans are suggesting that's not canon that's just your opinion Adam is still alive and in the cage as far as I know from what I've seen in season 5 finale so imagine Adam being forgotten about and being trapped you know for hundreds of thousands of years or however long it feels down there for him because we know timeline in hell passes very differently from real time uh, there's so many many more years in hell as opposed to real life because time is very slow there as we've seen with Dean so in this case uh, imagine all these years eternity what seems like an eternity for Adam trapped in there uh, Sam and Dean totally forgot about him. I did too because I never cared about him and I still don't so I'm not complaining about that um, He was never really family to them. He's just like some random half-brother that showed up like in season 5 Out of nowhere John never told them about him and they're supposed to care about him all of a sudden because he's you know uh, Family by blood half-brother. I mean they said it themselves family don't end in blood But it doesn't start there either which you know talks about the fact that Adam isn't really their family just because he's their blood, right? I never viewed him as his family, never liked him, and, um, you know, I'm, I don't even want him to come back, but I made a post recently on my channel uh, suggesting it would be interesting to have him back from a dramatic perspective, especially going into season 15, would be like a big thing, like a kind of like a blast from the past about bringing Adam back now, with all the drama, making him a villain essentially, because he's gonna be so mad at the boys. And uh, especially if he still has Michael 1 in him, which also is going to be very mad and frustrated, being stuck in the cage forever and being teased by his brother Lucifer and all of that. And last time Lucifer talked about him, he said he was like a mess in the cage. So definitely both characters, Michael 1 and Adam, would be, you know, very angry and frustrated at the world and the humans in general, at Lucifer, at the boys specifically. So... 
It's a gimmick for a big dramatic like family ties from the old days, the good old days of season 1 to 5. That's the only reason why I think it's a good idea to bring him back. And the hint we got from uh, Jack about, you know, uh, his uncle being in the cage when he's talking to Michael kind of made me think of that because writers of Supernatural don't randomly bring up characters unless there's, you know, hinting at some comeback down the line sooner rather than later. And then I read what Andrew Depp said in an interview about a familiar face coming back in the finale, which could be really anyone at this point, but tying in with the whole line from Jack that I just mentioned, uh, I'm guessing that'd be Adam coming back. And uh, J2 always talk about lo liking the actor who plays Adam. I forgot his name actually, but um, they really like him. And I feel like, you know, he might actually just come back based on his uh, good relationship with the boys in real life. And the fact that it's gonna make for good drama, right? It was a whole Michael 2 versus Michael 1 that a lot of us want to see and would find interesting. And how will Lucifer tie in with that? So this is what my video will be about uh, predictions for the finale in general. So I already covered one point, the Adam point. Um, before I jump to Lucifer and my other points, because I have like three or four points I want to cover. As far as predictions in the finale, uh, I'm gonna, you know, talk about the main thing first, the whole Michael situation inside Dean. I, I touched on that briefly, that Michael might actually get out of Dean sooner rather than later. Like, not in the finale, but before that, but who knows if he comes back again. Because they seem to be in very inconsistent, they don't know what to do with Michael this season. I mean, at one point, he's in Dean, two episodes in, he's outside of Dean, but not really, because he can come back at any point. And in mid-season... Uh, finale, he comes back again and then they trap him inside Dean's mind instead of kicking him out. So Michael keeps like yo-yoing around, like literally in and out of Dean, so you never know if he does get out from Dean before the finale. If he doesn't come back again before uh, the finale and, you know, become a big issue. So honestly, no one can predict what exactly is going to happen with Michael uh, towards the end of the season. You can easily say, He's going to be there till the finale and then break out and thus we're going to have a big confrontation somehow between Michael 2 and 1 or Michael 2 and Lucifer, maybe Michael 1 jumping in. Could be a whole mess going around. So the Michael situation is very unclear but I wouldn't be surprised if he leaves before the finale. So that's my prediction there about the Michael situation. Being kicked out of Dean before the finale somehow, they find a way as they always do. So I covered the Adam point, covered the Michael point, so I also want to touch on uh, Castile with the empty point that they built up to um, earlier in the season but we haven't heard back from for many episodes now. So the empty wanted to take Jack after he died but Castile of course sacrificed himself to save Jack and made a deal with the empty to take him instead because he escaped the empty before. He annoyed the empty enough to be kicked out of the empty essentially last season. So now he made a deal with Empty to get back to the Empty instead of Jack and Empty stupidly agreed as if Castile can't annoy the Empty again to get out, I'm guessing. Which seems like a crazy thing that he can't because if he could do it the first time, he could easily do it this time too. Even if he made a so-called deal, I mean he can easily break that deal, right? It's not like he made a deal with his blood or something. But the Empty told Castile that... Um, it's not gonna come claim him unless he's happy because Empty wants to see him t happy and then sad all of a sudden by taking him from his happiness. So stupid. But that's what the Empty told Castile anyway. So considering like the bad things coming to Winchester as we saw in the preview in the finale, uh, that's not a good bet that the Empty will take Castile because if there's bad things coming, which means he's not gonna be happy, so how will Empty take him, right? Unless that's part of the bad things the boys get, is Castile being taken away from them by the Empty, which could happen before they become sad, essentially. Yeah, so there could be that loophole about the cast happiness thing happening in the finale. So that's my third point. As far as the finale, um, Castile pretty much being taken again by the Empty, which kind of be a repeat of last season which wouldn't be so original, but it could be just one of the many cliffhangers of season 14 finale, which I guess would be kind of interesting if they go about it a different way this time, that he couldn't simply escape by annoying the empty. Hopefully, hopefully it's not that stupid that they go back to that point again. All right, the final point and prediction I want to talk about in this video, which I think is one of the most interesting ones, uh, Lucifer returning. I've been, you know, talking about it and predicting about it since last season, since his death. 
so-called death, which he really did die. But uh, they made it seem like he's not gonna come back. This time it's gonna be final from all the comments I read from showrunners and writers and stuff after season 13 finale. But I always predicted him coming back somehow, especially with, uh, you know, quotes by Mark Pellegrino from conventions and stuff and fans sending him stuff he said about him coming back. Um, saying like, uh, you know, Nephilim Grace could have a role in just for coming back. We haven't really seen much from that as far as explanations we got so far, why Nick is alive. We simply got that the blade killed Lucifer but did not kill the vessel, which I still find to be stupid. But anyway, we made a ho I made a whole, whole lot of videos about that already. I'm gonna, not going to go into much detail about this right now. What I want to talk about is Lucifer eventually coming back into Nick or possibly Sam in the finale. Uh, is there have been a there has been a big build up to that the whole season, Lucifer coming back. Obviously, Nick being affected by Lucifer, you know, having Lucifer mannerisms and stuff from the long time position of him. Lucifer, we found out is the reason why he planned uh, Nick's family murder and all of that to make him a prime vessel for him to say yes and all of that to make him a dark character and all of that stuff to the point that he chose him over his own wife last time we saw him that's a whole lot of twisted there Nick going super crazy there like the whole reason he went crazy to begin with is, is because his family died he wanted to, to have revenge on the people who killed his family even after he finds out that Lucifer is the one who planned the whole thing he still chooses Lucifer over his own wife his family so yeah, Nick is way gone by now, and last time we saw him he was looking for Lucifer in the dark, so good luck with that. And we've seen him wake up Lucifer from the empty by simply praying to him in the empty, basically. Which is really stupid how, just because it's his vessel, he has this kind of connection that he can just pray to him and wake him up from the empty. That's so crazy, like, it doesn't make any sense to me, but that's what happened anyway. So you walk Lucifer up from the empty like 7, 8, 10 episodes ago, feels like forever ago now. And um, I expected him to come back at this point to him much sooner, but they keep dragging it, you know, along and was still waiting for Lucifer to come back to him, which didn't happen. So another guess for Andrew Lab uh, quote about an old familiar character, he said a fan favorite coming back. So does he consider Lucifer a fan favorite? Because I would say so, because a lot of people, I like Lucifer. I used to not like him at first, but uh, seeing all his motivations, you know, and... Uh, more of his character being explored, especially in recent seasons, I actually understand him better, and uh, he's not like a black and white villain, really. He's a very complex character, and you can empathize with his motivations and hatred for God and humanity and all of that, so I would call him a fan favorite. Obviously, Mark Pellegrino kills it at Lucifer, uh, very charismatic. Um, I can't really picture anyone else as Lucifer but him in any show, not just Supernatural, even movies. So you can find like people playing Lucifer very good, like Misha did a good job playing Lucifer, uh, Sam, Jared did a good job playing Lucifer, uh, even the guy, Rick Springfield, his name I think, the actor, did a very good job playing Lucifer despite Mark not liking him much, a lot of fans not liking him as Lucifer in season 12, I actually did like him, especially in that scene we, when he talks about um, you know his issues with God in the bar, in the party thing, when the boys face him. Um, he had this dramatic, heartbreaking scene when he's talking about God leaving him again and stuff. I think he did a great job with that. But again, all these people doing a great job with Lucifer are never gonna come even close to how Mark Pellegrino is playing Lucifer. So, after all of that, I would say he is a fan favorite after all these series and the ultimate villain of the series. So, it was really shocking to me that they killed him for good, so-called, you know, quotation marks killed him for good last season. And uh, I'm not surprised they they're bringing him back again only one season later, really. So Andrew Depp could mean Lucifer when he's saying a fan theory, but that'd be so obvious and predictable if they, they've been building up for Lucifer all this season and just keep dragging it all the way to the finale for him to come back. I think that's going to be a very cheap so-called twist, because it's not really going to be a twist in my opinion, because we all know he's coming, right? So hopefully it's another character, in this case Adam, is my guess, coming back in the finale. So that was all for today guys about my predictions for finale. So I covered Adam's return, uh, Lucifer Rising coming back into the neck, Castell being taken by the empty, and Michael breaking out of the either before the finale or in the finale, and having all all storylines like aligning together and cre and clashing together so pretty much. Michael versus Michael, Michael versus Michael versus Lucifer, 
possibilities are endless. A lot of cool things could happen in the finale. Obviously, bad things are coming to Winchester, as it always does. Surprising, right? So, let me know what you think down below in the comments. What are your predictions for Season 14 finale? Do you agree with mine? Let me know down below in the comments. Subscribe for more awesome Sobrancha content. Till next time, as always, no chick flick moments. Awesome. That's awesome. Bye. Right. Right. Come on. You know what? You're awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>